Hello and welcome my community members and all the viewers. Um, today's lecture will be about how real life Azure functions work and which will be a step by step tutorial. So before I embark on actually building the Azure functions, I will show you when I have run the application, how does it look like and how the deployment looks like on the actual Azure portal. So here you go. Now we will run this application and wait for this to um, render the browser. Now when you run this function, the open API endpoints make it easy to try out the function locally using a generated page. You don't need to provide function access keys when running locally. So when functions runtime start locally, a set of open API and swagger endpoints are shown in the output along with the function endpoint. Well, we'll wait for the uh, function endpoints to appear over here in this uh, console. So again, in our browser, we'll open the render swagger UI endpoint, which is this one, HTTP colon localhost colon port number slash API slash swagger slash UI. So I will just minimize this console window a little bit and um, Okay, minimize this window also and then over here, I'll put the Swagger UI URL and now this is open API document on Azure functions. Okay, now what I can do is uh, HTTP scheme. All right, everything is prepared, request body model, um, post. You can try it out. So I can write values. So if I click on try it out and hours, if I put hours as say uh, six hours for turbine repair and capacity of 2500 kilowatt. And then click on execute. Then I will get a response which is message is yes, revenue opportunity is $7,200, which is more than the cost to fix, that is $1,600. So that is giving me the 200 response status okay code. So now I have a function that determines the cost effectiveness of emergency repairs. Next, I will be publishing my project and API definitions to Azure. Now we will publish the project to Azure. So in the solution explorer, I click and click on publish. So this publish window comes up and the target appears. It's still loading. So in the target, it's already highlighted on Azure and I will click next. Now it is going to map windows so the Selected one is the correct. Okay. So click on next. Okay. So already have an account. I'll have to sign. Now I have been logged in. When I was struggling to log in, I found that, you know, after entering my credentials several times, it will still not log me in. So what I found was the remedy was to just um, reboot the Visual Studio. Just close the Visual Studio and reopen it. And it, I was, uh, the, the logging was being recognized. Okay. So now publish the target is Azure subscription one, specific target, it's nothing is coming. So anyway, so function in instance, I have to create a new function. Okay. Specific target was Azure tutorial and create new in the create new. So new Azure function. So here it is already pre-filled with the name and subscription name is Azure subscription. Resource group is Azure tutorial and plan type consumption. All I will go with the um, default, which is already pre-selected for me. Azure storage, it is already created application inside this. Um, let me see, cannot create this. Um, 
So yes, the create button is now um, active. I can click create. So it will create a new function app. We validating all properties. It will take a while and we'll come back after it has created the function app. It is still creating the app service after a couple of minutes, but we'll have to be patient for it to complete creating the app service and I will come back once more. So it is now created a function instance which is already over here. Consumption with deployment slots. So at the moment there is nothing on the deployment slots, but that is um, not required for um, the time being. And this tutorial also. So click on next. Next is the API management tab. Okay. So in the API management tab, we still have the Azure subscription one as the target. And in the API management, we'll have to create a new instance. So create a new instance. So API name is already filled. Turbine repair, Azure subscription one, resource group, API management services required. So here also I will create a new one. I don't need to create a new resource group, but I need to create an API management service. Click on new. So turbine repair, API management, turbine repair API, pre-filled, Australia Central, Kaushik Rajadri, but administrator email is also written, but OK button is not there. So let me troubleshoot and I will tell you. So now, I've changed the name to Turbine Repair Service Azure API Management Service and then press OK. Now click on Create. It's revalidating all the properties and it will take a, its own sweet time before creating the API in API Management. After a minute or so it is still creating api in api management so i'll have to wait patiently for this to finish creating the api okay it's all done api is created for me and i click uh, finish so it is creating some profile publish profile now you could either have Take this automatically close when it's succeeded, but I can close it manually. Now this is ready to publish. So I can click publish button. This is the publish button. So it will publish. Publish into Azure function. App windows. Okay. So maybe easier. Let me see. I'm looking to publish targets. All is all are happening in the background. So we'll come back again once it is published. It is building the output. Showing here, publish started. So which is good. It's doing the publishing. Now I'll have to get the next step is get the function access key. So in the publish tab, so in the publish tab, we'll select this ellipsis next to um, hosting and open in Azure portal. Open in Azure portal. It will click. It will open the Azure portal. I'll bring it to this side. The window this side so that you can see. The Azure portal is loading. So this is my turbine repair such and such um, and it is showing the 280.49 dollar New Zealand dollar credit is still remaining out of the US dollar 200 credit okay so I will not go for upgrade to a pay as you go subscription as yet um, all right so now I clicked functions so turbine repair it came correctly your app is currently in read mode only because you're running on a package file so don't worry about whatever is written over here. Um, just overlook and under the function keys. So um, 
under the function keys where is the function keys so i expanded and under the function keys i click function keys then i select the default hidden value click to show value and i copy this on my clipboard i could renew the key value but there is no issue so i will let go with the default already created for me you can always change it okay and my my next step will be to configure the api management so let me bring the uh, visual studio solution again and this time again i'll have to clip the um, click the ellipsis near to the hosting and open api click on open api in azure portal Now this will uh, bring the API management instance we are just created to the Azure portal in my default browser, which is Chrome. The API management instance is already linked to my function app. So under APIs, okay, I've got this open API document, open API document on Azure functions. I'll click that, and under post run. Okay, then under inbound processing, I will bring this um, scroll bar down. Um, add a policy, and this will be um, set query parameter. Okay, and um, in this set query parameters, you can run learn more about the set query parameters policy if you click on this link. So. I am just leaving it to a future uh, lecture, maybe. But at the moment, I am just being practical and showing you the practical approach of what we set to do in the agenda. Okay, and against name, I will put code. Against value, I will add value, and then add the key that I have got, and then save. Okay. So policy for operation run saved successfully. Now that the function key is set, I can call the API to verify that it works with hosted in Azure. So our next item of learning is verify the API in Azure. So in the APIs, I will now select test. Okay. And here I will in the post run tab, click on post run. In the request body, I'll have to add some code. So here is my request body wrong. Okay. So hours is, let me put the hours in six. Like we already did it on Swagger locally when we run. So remember, we have already tested with the Six hours and capacity of how much was the capacity if you remember 2500 so we are going to do the same thing we are going to repeat the same thing on azure now it's on cloud and click on set so again you got the same message message yes revenue opportunity $7,200, cost of $1,600, and uh, that's great. So we've got this response back, which is 200 OK response, which is in conformity with the earlier one that we, when we tested it locally. Okay, so now the last step is to um, download the open API definition file, because my API is working perfectly fine as expected. Okay, so under APIs, I select this and I can um, export. Yes. Let me export. Okay. Download. These are the download definitions. You can export it in any of these formats Open API version 3 YAML, Open API version 3 JSON, Open API version 2 JSON, and WAT. Okay. So let me click on this. And it will start downloading in that chosen version. 
okay so it is actually downloading now it is downloaded and let me open this file so open api definition file is already created for me and downloaded that's great isn't it so it is uh, working the way it is shown in the tutorial microsoft tutorial so i'll close this this open in the visual studio code and i i have the choice to um, choose any of these format or all of these format just for playing around okay wsdl soap api and standard xml representation of restful api so everything is now fine working order the final step is cleaning up the resources so in the preceding steps we have created azure resources in a resource group and if you don't expect to need these resources for the future you can delete them by deleting the resource group okay from the azure portal menu okay home resource groups if i want i can say remember this was my resource group i can delete this resource group okay so as not to incur the cost okay and uh, um but you know i can persist if i like let me persist because i am still within my credit a uh, lot of credit is there and i have to finish it before one month before the expiry of that credit okay so thank you for watching and listening to me so patiently hope you like this please put your comments and feedbacks and subscribe to the channel and i have already searched for azure functions so in case this is not available in your recent project templates you can just look for azure functions over here or you can just start with just functions and it will bring the azure functions if it was um, not already there it will bring it here all right so i'll come back or i'll highlight this and i will click on next and i will have to configure my new project okay so i'll have my uh, location this location is i'll just change the location a little bit so i will give it a default name of um turbine repair and we'll keep it unticked list solution and project in the same directory we'll do without taking this and then go to the next and additional information i have to give so i'll be using .NET 6 long term support so you can just click to see find out .NET 6 isolated long term support .NET 7 isolated .NET framework so this present tutorial is based on a microsoft tutorial and i'll be putting the link in the description as well as in the video and it is a .NET long term support and function will be http trigger with open api and use azureite for runtime storage account for azure web job storage all right and authorization level is function there are two other authorization levels but we will go for function okay and then click on create to create the project azure functions project now this turbine repair project is created and in front of me and by default there is one function one class is created and we'll change the code in the function one to make it more practical now this project is about a turbine repair that means you know when uh, the turbine is down it will calculate how much will be the repair cost and how much will the turbine get a profit over a particular period of time say one day and it if the repair cost is less than the turbine profit cost out of the generation then it will be a yes reply the response would be yes that means uh, it will be profit profit is more than the actual cost of repair it will be i mean a yes response and otherwise it is a no response so if it is not profitable if the repair cost is more than the turbine can generate as a revenue then it will be a no now here it is important to know that parameters are supplied 
and there are two parameters uh, to supply to the functions either in query string or in the payload of a post request and these parameters are hours which is the estimated time to make a turbine repair up to the nearest whole hour and a capacity the capacity of the turbine in kilowatts okay so now i am going to um, change the code write over the existing default boilerplate code for this function with the code that i have on my clipboard from the microsoft tutorial so i will just highlight everything and paste my code which i have got on my clipboard and i will explain things um, a little bit to make it more interesting now this public static class turbines now my turbine repair function has been completed and in this lecture i am going to clarify each and every line of code and you can have a good overview of how this code works and what each and every line is working all right so this code defines an azure function named turbine repair within the turbines class okay it's public static class turbines this function is designed to decide whether it is more practical to repair a wind turbine or replace it altogether based on revenue opportunity and the cost to fix the turbine so let's see this is the function name turbine repair and let's study all of these attributes one by one so open api operation with an operation id run so this attribute is part of the azure function extensions for open api it is used to define metadata for operation in the generated open api swagger specification so we'll when we run it swagger will be opened okay so we'll see everything on the swagger now operation id is a unique identifier for this operation in this case the operation id is set to run okay operation id is set to run which means this operation is uniquely identified as run then open api security with a function key and security scheme type dot api key name equals code and n equals open api security location type dot query now this attribute open api security specifies the security requirements for the function in this case the security scheme is function key okay which indicates that the function requires a function key for authorization or api key for authorization and security scheme type dot api key it indicates that the security scheme uses an api key for authentication and name equals code this specifies the name of the query parameter where the api key is expected in this case the api key is expected as a query parameter with the name code and in open api security location type dot query this specifies the location of the api key or in this case the api key is expected to be provided as a query parameter and open api request body application slash json type of request body model description json request body containing hours and capacity this attribute defines the request body schema for the operation in open api specification open api request body and application slash json specifies the content type of the request body in this case it expects json data in the request body also type of request body model indicates the type of the request body model the request body model class or type is defined to represent the structure of the request body with hours and capacity properties okay description includes hours and capacity properties which will come next when we come to this part of the code at the bottom hours and capacity so this is the request body model all right and this description um of the open api request body 
is a JSON request body containing hours and capacity provides a description of the request body as is ev evident from this code that it include it should include hours and capacity and open API response with body the, the up one the, the above one was open API request body which I just described and now let's come to the open API response with body which is status code now this actually is an attribute for the response so status code should be HTTP status code dot ok and again the com content type is the same application slash JSON, JSON and body type is string type ok and here the description is written as ok response message containing a JSON result ok um, so status code indicates that this response is returned when the function executes successfully with an HTTP status code of 200 ok and content type is the specifying the content type of the response body in this case the response body will be again in JSON format as it was the request body as well ok and uh, type of string ok let's see what is type of string that where did we see that type of string uh, yeah, body type type of string indicates the type of response body in this case the response body will be in a JSON string format and description provides a description this description provides a description of the response explaining what the successful response will contain now these attributes play a crucial role in documenting the functions behavior and specifies the expected request and response format additionally they are used by tools to generate API documentation client SDKs and perform input validation during development they are particularly useful when building restful API with Azure functions and adhering to open API specification so let's go for a step-by-step -step explanation of the how the actual function works run now let's uh, learn what is this attribute HTTP trigger with an authorization level dot function and post and root equals null which is decorating the HTTP request does so it at this attribute you know HTTP trigger attribute it indicates that the Azure function will be triggered by an HTTP post request and it requires a function level authorization or a function key so clients need to include the function key in the request to access the function and the function is accessible at the root level of the functions URL okay and then this function parameter let's come to this actual HTTP request REQ this parameter represents the incoming HTTP request to the function and then the link stays I logger log so this log function this parameter is an instance of the logger which is used to log messages during the functions execution and we have got two constants you know uh, sorry three con constants revenue per kilowatt 0.12 this revenue is a revenue earned per kilowatt hour of the wind turbines capacity which is set to 0.12 okay and technician cost is technician cost the cost per hour to repair the wind turbine by a technician this is set to 250 so don't worry about the units it is just a 250 it's a number okay so it could be any unit it could be cents it could be you know uh, any other currencies uh, minimal cost or turbine cost is turbine cost you know actual cost of the turbine it could be hundred dollars okay a hundred units of any currency the function is an HTTP triggered function as I just said concluded with an HTTP post method and it expects a JSON request body with the following structure with a structure of within double quotes hours which is of integer type and capacity also of integer type the hours field represents the number of hours required to repair the wind turbine and the capacity field requires the uh, I mean represents the capacity of the wind turbine in kilowatt and then we deserialize the request body okay in this code string request body equals await new stream reader request dot body dot end to end read to end async so this function 
reads the request body and deserializes it into a dynamic object. Uh, actually, that is this line dynamic data equals JSON convert dot deserialize object request body. The first the request body is assign a new stream reader. You know, stream reader is initializes a new instead of the stream reader class for reading the stream and it reads it from the body of the request. Okay, request dot body and read to end till the end asynchronously. Reads all characters from the current position to the end of the stream and returns them as one string. So after the string is returned as a response, then this is deserialized with JSON convert by passing this as a string and we generate the data dynamically. All right. Now this dynamic data is used to extract the capacity and hours values okay and input validation and now this function checks if the capacity and hour values are present in the request body so if it is not present either of the two is not present either the capacity or the hours is null then it returns a bad request object result okay with the description please pass capacity and hours in the request body so it's a input validation check basically request object okay bad request object result um, so next we go to the calculate the revenue and the cost the function calculates the revenue opportunity and the cost to fix the wind turbines using the following formulae so this revenue opportunity which is of a double type nullable double type capacity into revenue per kilowatt into 24 hour so it can it calculates the potential revenue per day based on the capacity of the wind turbine and cost to fix is the cost to fix this calculates the total cost to fix the wind turbine including technician cost and the cost of the turbine okay and then comes the decision making if the revenue opportunity is greater than the cost to fix then is repair turbine yes yes of course we'll go ahead for repairing the turbine because the cost to fix is less than the actual revenue opportunity else the repair turbine is no okay so then finally its response is returned as a new okay object result with the message passed in as the repair turbine okay whichever it is yes or no and revenue opportunity and cost to fix are calculated so once again as conclusion this function this entire function run function it takes the capacity and repair hours of a wind turbine as input and calculate the potential revenue opportunity and the cost to fix the turbine and then decides whether it is more practical to repair the turbine or replace it altogether the decision is based on comparing the revenue opportunity with the cost to fix the function returns the decision along with the calculated revenue opportunity and cost in the response